All right. Okay. So I'm back. Um, this is not typical. I typically just do one uh, live session a week, but I wanted to do this for you guys um, since I missed uh, a session back, you know, a couple weeks ago when I was working. So I was asked to do the University of Tennessee, um, their health, I think it's Science Center PA program. So that is what I'm doing today. Um, if you have any other requests for schools to review, leave them in the comment section and I will review them, you know, as time permits, obviously. Okay, so um, let me just get into it. I'm going to start sharing my screen and then we can go from there. Um, Chaz has already sent a comment and said, hey there, I appreciate the review of UT PA program. Um, hold on, sorry. I'll call you back. I'm doing a video. Bye. Sorry, you guys. Um, and then Chaz also said, this is one school I plan on to apply for next year, along with Middle Tennessee State University's new PA program that started last year. The more schools that don't have a GRE requirement, the better. And I know that there are a lot of people that are like you that have that same like kind of idea that, hey, I don't want to take the GRE. And that is fine because, you know, you know yourself and you know what you want. So good for you. Well, let's get into it, though. You're saying it doesn't require the GRE, so let's see. Um, I'm going to share my screen. We're going to go directly to their page. Okay. All right, so here we go. So this is it. The University of Tennessee Health Science Center. Um, this is their PA program page. I like this. I like this already. I'm seeing all of this diversity up. Oh this, these people's faces are cut off, but no worries. Um, I love this. I really love the diversity I see in here. I, there's this girl here wearing a hijab, um, lots of brown and black faces. It's white faces. It's nice. So I'm excited about that. Let's see how many students. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 6, 7, 7, 8, 7, 9. So they may have had um, a class, their class size might have been a class of 30. We'll check on that um, and see. But let's just see what's on their main page. So they have a little video um, that you can take a virtual tour of their, their program on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and get on um, this website and go to this video right here. Uh, their information session. So Obviously, excuse me, you guys. Obviously, um, at, we're probably past their deadline or something like that. Like this information was for last year. Maybe they'll have another information session for 2022 around the same time. Don't know, but we'll see. Let's look at their mission. So the mission of the PA program is to prepare a diverse group of highly skilled physicians and practitioners who are dedicated to improving access and providing high quality primary and or specialty health care as part of interprofessional teams and who are committed to lifelong learning and to increasing the knowledge base of the profession. Okay, so I mean, very much like all of the other schools that we've kind of done, you know, they want to pr pr provide or prepare a diverse um, culturally competent group of providers, essentially. Okay, we get it. So uh, the missions of most schools are always the same. It's still, it's or similar. It's still nice for you guys to look at these mission statements because if there are little nuances here and there, if there's something that sticks out um, from another school, you can hold on to that and grab onto that so that when you do get that interview, speak it into existence. When we get that interview, um, you have something to talk about. You have something to grab that you you can imply that you know you gravitated towards the school because of this mission um and they have a pledge to their students to provide high quality education opportunity to become educated with comprehensive background um to be a model of true professionalism cool all right so they the front page is pretty simple clean cut ready get to it like it uh let's look at their admissions uh, their prerequisites. Let's do it. Okay, so obviously you need a bachelor's degree. Um, you also, is that another? No, oh, this must be a different class. Is this a different class? 
because I don't remember seeing this guy. Okay, so another class here. Um, so bachelor's degree, 3.0, cumulative GPA. All, all applicants must have graduated by August 31st of the year prior to the program's, prior to the program's matriculation. Okay, August 31st of the year prior. Okay, so um, maybe they have like a summer or summer start. Let's see. Special announcements. We are aware that almost all colleges and universities had to augment their normal grading process, policies and courses um, as part of our holistic admissions for students who did not receive letter grades in 2020 and 2021. We will, they'll accept uh, pass or fail courses. This is good for you guys. I mean, I know like COVID did not like came with all of its challenges and came up with some pretty bad, um, you know, outcomes, obviously, for many parts of uh, the world and our country. But man, like this whole like pass fail thing, like this is a blessing in disguise for a lot of people. So um, use this opportunity if you went to school in 2020 and 2021. Um, and you had to go through, you know, virtual learning and all of that stuff and, and deal with all the challenges that COVID brought. Um, you know, this is kind of like, this is kind of like a, a gift to you all. All right. So they need anatomy, physiology, biology, just one semester, microchemistry. So like your general chemistry, um, and organic, the admissions committee does recommend the, does not require, so it doesn't require organic chemistry or biochem, but it recommends that you take it. So this chemistry is just your general chemistry, medical terminology, psychology, just one course. Again, math, typically statistics, just one course. Um, it gives you your recommended courses, uh, see or better. Okay, so let's look at this. We read the fine print, right? So it requires any anatomy and physiology, micro and medical terminology must have been completed in the last five years. All right, so that is just something to keep in mind. And they will accept AP credits if accepted by the applicant's university or college. So like me, um, I did like um, advanced placement psychology and statistics and I think English and there might have been one more class that I did in high school but that was accepted by my undergraduate university um, towards my bachelor's degree and so in that instance um, the school would have accepted it. Um, due to COVID we recognize that some applicants will not be able to obtain direct care experience or shadowing hours. We are waiving our minimum requirement. Again, another gift, um, blessing in disguise to many of you. Additional information slash health requirements upon acceptance, the supplemental application fee, immunizations, um, background check. These are all things that are, are typical. Um, international student requirements, the following requirements must be met in addition to the prerequisites. So, Clearly, they accept international um, students. You have to be a permanent resident. I don't know why it says must be U.S. citizen or permanent resident. Like, okay, I mean, if I'm a U.S. citizen, then I wouldn't really be qualified as an international student, but whatever. Um, that's neither here nor, nor there. I digress on that. Uh, but definitely uh, must be permanent resident. Um, so I don't know... It, it, the whole, like, if you have a visa thing, then you're not necessarily a permanent resident. So you might want to look into that if you're an international student looking at this program, because uh, that would be something to clarify um, right there. All right, so they have an admissions checklist that you can use. You can print off and check off um, the various different things that you've done. Application um, process, obviously, again, they use CASPA. Let's look and see when they're application deadline is. Why isn't this allowing me to go anywhere? Um, can you guys still, can you guys still see and hear? Okay. For whatever reason, this is not 
taking me to where I want to go. So let's go to the cost of attendance, see if that works. Okay, so that application procedure, like going, maybe it was trying to take me to CASPA and for whatever reason, CASPA is down or something, I don't know. But the cost of attendance, so here is their estimates. Ooh, this is kind of hard to read. Um, let's see, I don't know. Okay, out of state, I don't know what this is. Okay. Med College of Medicine. College of Medicine. Physician assistant. Okay. Okay. So their total. Is it saying that it's 74000 for the full time? I, I don't know. It's a little bit difficult for me to understand, honestly, you guys. Um, maybe I'm having a senior moment. So it's saying like out of state total is thirty seven thousand for the first year, and I, and then seventy four thousand. Like so, maybe for both years. Um, Sorry, it's it's a little confusing to me. I'm guessing it's about seventy four thousand for both years. Uh, I don't quote me on that. You'll have to ask them directly, but I think that's what that meant. Um, it's just a little difficult to read. It would be nice if they just had it like just kind of clear, and then we can go into you know just more so like that broken down um, ta like uh, graph that they had there um but whatever scholarship opportunities okay so this is good they have scholarship opportunities so you just go to the financial aid website to see if there are any grants or scholarships that you can apply for pa foundation scholarship so this is usually done through the pa foundation you can find more information about that on um like aapa's website and all that stuff but they do give away um, scholarships every year for various different things um so you just go on and look and see what you may essentially apply to like what you may qualify to apply to and then apply um i've known a couple of people that have gotten some scholarships from the pa uh from it from the pa foundation all right uh national health service corps scholarships so the national health service corps so this is um one of the places that i've always talked about where you can apply to the national health service corps and if you get their scholarship or you all you have to do is like kind of repay it back with your time so working in an underserved area for like one or two years or three years depending on whatever um the scholarship requirements are uh, and then essentially you will be completely debt free after you've gotten out of school and you've worked off your time and I mean, it's a really good opportunity for some. So I like this. They have a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of scholarships here, which is cool. Kudos to you, um, UTHSC, uh, because this is great for people who are thinking like, how am I going to afford this? If I get into PA school, how do I afford it? So um, that's always a question that I get asked and they have it laid out right there for you. All right, so the 2021, that was 2021's um, uh, CASPA cycle. So their verified application, this is early. This is August 31st. So they're one of the earlier schools, um, school admission deadlines. Because uh, I think like there's a good amount that are in like October, September time, um, but August 31st is right there, um, you know, with the September 1st, August 31st uh, deadline. So you literally, once CASPA opens up in April, you really should be looking at, all right, do I have all my things together uh, so that I can apply by like July the latest? Not July the latest, I'm sorry, June the latest, so that you have at least a month to make sure that your application is verified and all things are good. All right. Okay, orientation. Do I really need to know anything about orientation? Um, I don't really care about that. 
Let's look at their previous classes. Okay, class of 2020. So yeah, that's one class of 2020, class of 2019. Oh, <coughs> I know this girl. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're, we're IG friends. <laughs> Okay, so she went to uh, University of Tennessee. Cool. That's dope. Um, class of 2018. A little less diverse here. Class of 2017. How many males? One, two, three. What is this one doing in the back? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, okay. 2016. Wow, I'm going back. 2015. All right, so I guess this this school started in 2015. I would say. I don't know if these people are students or faculty, but um, uh, diverse in age for sure. This is like the more mature group, but. Okay, I like it. I like it. What I would like to see, though, is there any information on that? Nope. What I would have liked to see is if I could have like clicked into this and saw exactly like what their average um, like GPA was, all of that. Let's look at. Let me look at something else because I don't think I saw. So I, I didn't see anything about the GRE not being required. So let me, maybe it's on the admissions checklist. Let's look at that. All right. So this is the admissions checklist. Uh, 3.0, we saw that. GRE up, oh, no longer requires the GRE. Ding, ding, ding. All right. So if you guys do not want to take the GRE, this is a school for you. They no longer require the GRE. You know, and a lot more schools are moving away from the GRE. So uh, just something to keep in mind um, when you're shutting out that money to take that test for some of these programs. Uh, three letters of recommendation. Great. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, there, I think that's pretty pretty much it. Let's just go to their frequently asked questions and see what they're talking about really quickly. Um, because this site was like pretty, pretty clear. All right. So what's a PA? Make sure y'all make sure you know what a PA is. Make sure you're up to date on like the newest PA information. Like know that we've done a name change. Like I know they're still using like physician assistant, but we're physician associates now. Like like know about all of this stuff, okay? Um, because it it will be pretty telling if you go into an interview and you don't know um, what the job consists of in the career that you're trying to apply to, okay? Um, how long is the program? Sure. How long is the program? So this program is 24 months, uh, some two, two years. Very simple. Can I be accepted before I've completed all my prerequisite courses? No. Okay. Would you believe, what would you believe is a pro? Okay. Mm, I don't really care. Um, I prerequisite courses slash education experience. I've taken a, a several biology courses, but I have not taken any labs or labs really required. Um, applicants must complete one-on-one -on -one courses of upper level biology. Typically, these will be designated applicants who take above the requirements will receive additional consideration on their application. Um, so I, I guess, no, they're not really required. It, it doesn't really do a good job of answering that question, I would say. Um, it says you'll be considered on your you'll receive additional consideration but like just be as clear as you said this no for getting you know the courses getting accepted before your courses have been completed 
I have an on I have a bachelor's degree. I obtain online. Online programs will suffice, but your bachelor's degree must be from an accredited university to apply to PA program. Okay, so you can um, apply to this program even if you went to school online. You just would have it just has to be an accredited university. So like University of New England um, would be one such school. It has been over five years since I took some of my science courses. Okay, we already know which science courses have to be completed within the last five years. So pay note of that. They do accept scribing hours as healthcare experience. But again, remember due to COVID, obviously there's no minimum. However, just keep in mind, bear in mind, just because there's no minimum doesn't mean that it doesn't play into the fact of you like looking at, like looking like a good candidate or a better candidate if you have a lot of hours. I mean, it's just that plain and simple. When it gets down to like the difference between you and somebody else and you guys have like the same stats, you're going to have to find things that like puts one person just that much above the other. And this is where like these intangibles like volunteering and shadowing and healthcare experience and all those things come into play, okay? If I provide you the course name and number, can you tell me if it will meet? All right, no, they can't do that. That's like a lot. Um, they would have to do, if you know they do it for you, they'd have to do it for everybody else. Um, financial aid, job returns. Okay, I mean, you guys, this this website was pretty um, pretty clear cut. Let's look at their faculty. I'm pretty much done looking at everything. Oh, accreditation status for sure. Oh, I love that. You know, admissions, curriculum, faculty, and accreditation status all there for you to see just right off the bat. Um, so we have the department chair. We have the program director. Um, Christopher Madey. Christopher Madey. I've heard this name before. Mm, where did I hear this name? He's authored numerous. Da, 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 da. He has served national PAEA. Hmm. Jap, maybe was it Jappa? Maybe I heard of him from Jappa. I've heard of this name before, Christopher Madey. Um, I don't know where specifically, but maybe it was through Jappa when I was writing my paper. So he's the program director, Dr. Spencer is the medical director, uh, director of clinical education. So there's a lot of men that I've seen so far. Okay, Liam Pickup. Deborah Harowitz is a professor. Dr. Ward. It's Tatum. All right, so it's a, a lot more male than female in terms of um, professors and stuff, but it's cool, I mean, that's fine. Um, I the school we looked at on Tuesday had a lot Monday we had a lot more females I think we only had females actually if I'm not mistaken but this is cool maybe it's, all right accreditation the University of Tennessee Health Science Center has continued accreditation let's see their next um, review will not be until 2027 that is a while away. Okay, so y'all are good. So you guys are good. Apply away. No GRE, no minimum, um, no minimum requirements. You guys are, are A okay. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I don't have anything else to look at. Uh, if you have any questions for me, leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you have anything that you want me to answer in the next six, six minutes, because I'll stay on to, for another. And since till I've been doing this for 30 minutes, I would say. Um, so if you have any questions that you want me to answer, ask them now um, or forever hold your peace. And uh, join me on Sunday for a new video and then Tuesday for our next video um, and another live session. Um, and then we'll go from there. Okay. All right. Um, and I don't know, Sienna said V U R F Y I. I don't know what that means. Sorry. I don't know if I should, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. 
so Chaz, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this one is for you. Hopefully you got the information that you were looking for or um, you already knew and it just kind of re, uh, kind of like solidified in your mind that this is the school for you. I'm going to leave since no one has any questions. Again, thank you guys so much for wa watching. If you haven't already done so, like, subscribe, um, and follow me on Instagram and on the PA. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.